Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Brandon and today we're going to be going over how to set up a Covenant C2 server with an HTTP redirector. Now this redirector is going to be awesome. It's going to be a way for us to kind of have a layer in between our C2 beacon client and our C2 server. That way if the IP of our C2 server or our actually our redirector gets blocked, we can fall back to a different redirector and our C2 infrastructure isn't actually going to be affected. So let's get started by actually installing the Covenant C2 server. Now I'm going to be installing this on an Ubuntu 2004 machine, which I have here on the right. We're SSH into that. And here on the left, you can see the actual GitHub page for Covenant. So the first thing that we need to do according to their install instructions is to actually clone the repository. So let's just copy that. Let's go into, well, actually let's run this as root. Um, we will go into the opt directory. That's where we will install it to. And let's paste that command in just to clone the actual repository. Now, there's going to be a dependency here of installing the actual .NET Core. Uh, Microsoft has some docs on how to do that for Debian 10, which will work for our Ubuntu instance. So I'll drop the link below in the description in case you want to copy and paste the commands. They can definitely be a pain to type out by hand. But essentially what we need to do is uh, download their dev package and then actually install it. So let's just copy this and we'll paste it over here. And perfect, now we have that package added and now we have to just actually install .NET. Now what we need is the .NET SDK 3.1 for the current version of Covenant C2. So let's just paste this in and run that. This should install all the things that we need and hopefully after this is installed, we should be able to start Covenant up with no problem. It's a very simple installation. Basically just install Covenant from the GitHub repo, install the .NET dependencies and then we should be able to start it up. Perfect, now that everything is installed, we should be able to uh, CD into this covenant directory and then go into covenant. Uh, in here, we will have all the files necessary to start the web server. Let me just make sure I can get the IP address beforehand. And all we need to do is uh, .NET build. So we'll do .NET build. And then this will actually go through and build the actual binaries and things that need to be in place to start the web server. And then once this completes, all we have to do is actually start it up. Sweet, so that only took about 30 seconds to actually build. So now we can just do .NET run and our Covenant server should start up with no problem. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, looks like it's going through and starting. What we're gonna need to do in preparation is browse to the actual IP address. We'll do HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.1.141 and then it's going to run on port uh, 7443 and hit enter. And we'll be greedy with this, you know, uh, message about the certs being invalid just because they're self-signed, but that's okay. We'll just proceed. And now all we have to do is register an initial user so you can set up your first account here. All right. And now we have our user set up. So now we can actually see um, what the Covenant C2 interface looks like. Now, this is an awesome C2 framework to use. I'm actually fairly new to it. I haven't been using it too often, um, maybe for about the last month or so, but I found it awesome going through some uh, machines on Hack the Box Offshore. Uh, so it's been really useful for me. So the first thing that we wanna do is set up a listener. So this is what's gonna actually listen for our um, launchers when they execute the payload. So let's just create a regular listener. Um, we'll just name it test for now. And we'll, we'll leave the connect port on 80, the connect addresses. Um, let's just put this as the server's IP address. So we'll do uh, 192.168.1.141. And you can see that I'll say the URL is right here on port 80. That's perfect. Now we can add more connect addresses if we want, but we'll get into that later. Um, we will leave it on custom HTTP, custom HTTP profile for now. And perfect. So we have that listener started and it is active so it's actually listening on port 80 now that's perfect now what we're going to do is just set up a test launcher just to show you how the regular launchers would work in comparison to the http redirectors so we'll go into launcher uh let's just do a powershell one for now make sure the listener is set to the one that we just created and let's just generate that payload here all right so now we can just copy this powershell command um, I'm going to go to an RDP session that we had open. I guess not. Um, let's see. Let's start a new RDP session into this machine. This is just a regular Windows 10 machine that I have set up. Uh, just stock machine, nothing crazy on it, but it's something that we can test our HTTP connections to. Okay, and we just need a password here. Of course, trust our certificate, it's mine. All right, so now we're in this Windows 10 machine and let's just open up a PowerShell window and paste this command in. 
So this is a fairly long command, but what it should do is basically open up a PowerShell window in the background that is hidden, and it should beacon back to our Covenant C2 server, and then we should have a grunt showing up in the web interface. So hopefully this will work. Let's see, we'll hit enter. Um, hmm. So it looks like our AV is blocking it. So let's just go ahead and uh, disable Windows Defender, make this more secure for us. Let's see, so Windows Defender. Um, see, all this is off, off, off. Oh, it doesn't look like this is off. It looks like it's setting, it's, it found the threat. So let's see, uh, let's go to Manage Settings and we'll turn off the real-time protection. Um, that should be enough to get our payload to fire. So now if we just hit up and enter again, it's too long. Hmm, we'll try to paste it again. Maybe there's an error pasting. So sometimes that can happen, especially with these long payloads. It can be easier to transfer them from the web sometimes, but I think I might have pasted it twice. So now let's just hit enter. All right, perfect. So that PowerShell window popped off in the background. That should be a nice key indicator that it worked. And you can see if we go back to this covenant window, we can see a new grunt has been added. So if we go into the grunts tab, we can see it gave it some arbitrary name, and we can start to actually interact with this grunt and do different tasks. So for example, we can do, who am I? Press enter, it'll send that task out to the beacon, and then we should get a uh, response back whenever it beacons back. So you can see it says we are Conda. So if we go back into our VM now, and we'll open up uh, CMD, let's run this as an administrator. If we type in netstat, Dash a n we should be able to see where the actual connection is established for this beacon so we're looking on something that will be connected to port 80 uh let's see oh right down here so you can see that this is the actual address of our c2 server where this connection is established to so um, if a blue team member or somebody was looking for c2 communications they would see the exact address of our c2 server and if they were to block this we would kind of be screwed and we'd have to build the infrastructure back up so this is where the redirectors come into place um, once we set up our http redirector the address that we see it bound to here on port 80 won't actually be our c2 server but just a generic apache proxy server and we can have as many of these set up as we want as much redundancy as possible so that even if these domains or ips are getting blocked our c2 communications will still remain valid so let's take a look at actually setting up our http redirect server so let's start a new putty session and we'll go into another um, ubuntu machine that i have set up again it's just a regular base ubuntu image and we should be able to set up an Apache server on here that allows us to use this server as an intermediary between the actual beacons and the listener on the C2 server. So we should see some difference in the traffic that's created here. So let me just try to change the font here real quick so that you guys can actually see this. Uh, let's see. I think we can set it to 16 point. Perfect. That looks a little bit better. All right. So now let's pull this up. And the first thing we need to do is um, install apache2 so we'll do sudo apt install apache2 sorry I, I cannot type today all right so make sure apache2 is installed and let me actually just check some of the other things that we need to install perfect so this shouldn't take too long and then we can get into actually configuring the apache server now there are a few modules that we have to enable in apache to be able to proxy traffic back and forth act as a forward and reverse proxy so let's just do eight um sudo a2 nmod for apache 2 enable modules and we're gonna do uh rewrite proxy and proxy http and then uh we also need to do proxy connect so these modules will be enabled Perfect, so now we just have to uh, restart Apache, but first let's do, uh, let's actually enable the default site. So we'll do um, a2 end site, and then 00 default.com, perfect. And then we'll do uh, sudo service Apache2 restart. Now hopefully if we browse to this IP now, we should be able to at least hit the default Apache landing page. So let's see, let's go back to our web browser. Try to see if we can hit port 80. All right, awesome. So we do have the default Apache web page working. 
But we, what we want to do now is make this default page work as a proxy and well, an HTTP redirector for our beacon clients. Now you can also configure this website to look completely legitimate, but only proxy certain URLs through. So that's another technique you can use to make it look like maybe there's some legitimate traffic going to the website. Because if you just have this random default, you know, Apache web page, and then some a lot of traffic going to it, it's going to set off some alarms in people's heads. So let's go back to our um, our C2 our redirector and um, what we need to do is start to change the Apache default site configuration. So let's just go into a root shell and we'll do uh, vim slash etchd Apache 2 sites enabled and then that uh, zero zero default site that we had. Now here's the actual configuration for that website. What we need to configure is a way to proxy traffic from certain URLs to our actual C2 server. Now the way you can figure out which URLs need to be proxied, let's take a look. So what we're going to do is go over to Covenant. Uh, we want to create a new listener. So we're going to have this one listen on port 80 as well. So let's go into test and we'll stop it. And let's create a new one. We'll call this redirect. And what we need to do is set the connect address to actually be the address of our redirect server. So that was, let's see, I don't remember what that was off the top of my head. Uh, let's just get out of this. Uh, we'll do IPA get the IP address of this here and we'll paste that in. So this is going to be the actual address that the clients are beaconing back to. Now it can be a domain name as well, but for this example, we're just going to be using IP addresses and HTTP with no encryption, no certificates involved. Now the next thing we can do is set a, um, a custom HTTP profile. So let's see, we, we named it redirect. We have the connect port is 80, the address of the redirect server, not the C2 server and uh, we'll put the HTTP profile to custom and hit create. So now if we go over to profiles and custom HTTP profile, you can see that these are the HTTP URLs where the client is actually uh, beaconing back to, to the listener. So the listener actually cares about these three pages here. So the index, docs, and test, all in this en-us folder. Now you can create um, new URLs here. You can you know, delete some of these, but this basically makes it so there's more variation in your traffic so that it looks like there's more typical use going on of this web server than just, you know, an actual C2 server. Um, you can also change a lot of the data that's handled in the requests and responses here. So by default, it's just going to be hello world and then a comment with the data. So that can be nice to change that. So it looks like some, again, legitimate traffic. But um, we're, I'm not going to change any of this for now. We just need to take a note of these URLs because that's what we need to forward in the proxy. So let's go back to our redirect server. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Sorry about that. All right. So here's our redirect server. And we want to only forward the URLs that are needed to be forwarded. And these are the ones that are right here under the HTTP URLs. So let's go back and um, we'll start editing the site. We're just going to go down to the um, right below the logs here. So we can just start editing. And the first thing that we want to do is turn uh, proxy requests off. Now this is just so that our server can't be used as an open proxy. And then the next thing that we're going to do is add a proxy pass entry. So we'll do proxy pass. And what we want to do is specify the uh, local URL and then the remote URL of where it's going to be passed to. So um, for the first one, we're going to do slash en slash index.html. And we'll paste that in here. And then we'll just do a space and we want to proxy it to uh, HTTP colon slash slash the IP of our C2 server. So this is 192.168.1.141 and then slash um, en, you know, index.html. So what this is going to do is every time it gets a request, it's going for this URL, it's going to forward it on to uh, this one at our actual C2 server. Now, something that's interesting to note is that you could have this HTTP redirector exposed to the internet and this C2 server not exposed to the internet and just use a, um, a local IP address like we are doing now. But you can start to hide your C2 server only on internal adapters so that you can't really prod at it except by going through the redirectors. Now, after we add this proxy pass entry, the next thing that we need to add is a proxy pass reverse so that traffic can flow in the opposite direction as well. And we're going to uh, have this set up the same way. So basically the same exact arguments here. Let's make sure that we add a space here. 
and that should be perfect so now what we want to do is just add entries for the rest of these urls let me split this a little bit more so it just it stops wrapping as much so let's just take these two entries that we created let's copy these and we'll paste it twice fix these spaces those got all jacked up uh let's see there we go and now we want to have instead of index for this next one we want to have docs.html so we'll change it to docs and make sure we do it over here as well so let's see change index to docs again all right and do the same make sure to do the same thing for the uh proxy pass reverse or else none of our traffic is actually going to work so we'll change this one to docs and then the third one that we have is test.html so we will change index to test let's see we'll change that one this one and then make sure again to double check that you're doing it for the proxy pass reverse as well because if you don't then you're not going to get any traffic back through the proxy so now that we have all those set that should be fine um, so let's just right quit here and we'll do a service apache 2 uh, restart all right and that failed so let's take a look at why uh, so do journal ctl dash xe uh, invalid command proxy request i think i had a typo there this should be proxy requests plural sorry about that so we should just make that quick change and hopefully now if we restart this it should work awesome so now our apache server should be working and we could browse to uh this ip address which is what is this again I can never remember my memory is fading even though i'm young so let's browse to this ip and you can see we do get the default page and that is perfect um so now what we should be able to do is go back to covenant we have our listener set up let's make sure that that's actually active our redirect listener is active now let's get a launcher we'll get a powershell launcher built put it to the redirect listener and let's generate this okay now let's copy the payload go over to our windows host and let's see we will open let's open up a powershell um, prompt again we'll paste this command in and hopefully now when we execute it it'll work the first time and we should be connecting to our redirect server instead of our c2 so let's hit enter that goes into the background so let's go back and verify that our grunt was received so we'll minimize this it looks like we do have a new grunt it starts with 74 so let's go and we can see that that is here it's active let's try interacting with it make sure that we can get the communication working both ways so we'll type in who am i uh, it looks like it was tasked to the grunt and hopefully that will respond and if it did perfect yeah it did so it looks like the communication is working bi-directionally now if we do another netstat dash an let's see where this is connecting to so we should see perfect we can see that this is actually connecting back to uh, 192.168.1.97 on port 80 instead of our actual c2 server address which was uh, .1.141 so if you look we won't see any connections to .1.141 anywhere in here all that we're going to see is this one connection here to our redirect server so if, again if this were to get blocked it would not affect our c2 communications too much because we could just start using a different redirector so if you want to set up multiple redirectors, when you go to your uh, listener, if, when you create a new listener, just add multiple connect addresses here. Maybe specify like three to five redirectors, something like that, and you have some redundancy built in there. So that if one redirector gets blocked, you still have multiple set up and your entire C2 infrastructure doesn't have to be rebuilt or re-architected. So that is all I have for you today on setting up a Covenant C2 server with an HTTP redirector. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.